if Dick is going to come up or not. He's not. <laughs> All right. This is Dale Peterson. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> you get me back. This is my third time. <laughs> um, is your mic on? There's so much to talk about. First of all, I'd like to, like, it's got to come down, guys. Uh, I heard Byron was here. Uh, you know, I hired him. That was a good hire, right? Yes. <laughs> and then I heard my mom say, he is so good, he's the best speaker we've ever had. <laughs>
podcasts, we've got weekend messages, there's radio stations, there's books to read, magazines. But I, it just kind of dawned on me, what are the most critical tools we have that can help us be a person of influence to help make a legacy for the kingdom of God? And over here in that first little box or circle you got there, you have a tool called Teach. You all have something that you can teach someone else. Be a teacher. Think about your history. Think about all the stuff that God has poured into you and how can you use that to teach, especially in the next generation. Have you ever seen a real leader? Go out to lunch with a real leader and they can't stop teaching. <laughs> they, they just, they, they're drawing on napkins, <clears throat> they're rearranging the salt and pepper shaker and the sugar packets because they have an idea that they want to share with you because they're trying constantly to teach, to unite, to get momentum, to leave a legacy. And I think you have a lot to teach. The next tool is encourage. How can you encourage people around you? I think Jesus would want you to encourage people. Because there are people, even in the prayer requests, that are in a dark spot. I think a lot of people still have not recovered from all of the emotional drain of COVID. You know, we're even seeing that with the staff at Eagle Brook Church. Uh, the last couple of years has really been difficult for people. And so how can we encourage? And, and that's exactly what I do on a Wednesday morning when I Zoom with Ukraine, is in the back of my mind, it's like, Dale, make sure they're encouraged. Make sure they're encouraged because <clears throat> This particular church, they're not being bombed right now, uh, but they're worn out because they're feeding refugees. And they're feeding soldiers. And the people in this city, the city's about 300,000 people, people in the city have heard this church is helping, so they're delivering potatoes and cabbage. And so all the leaders of the church are in the basement making food to go feed people. And, and I, I asked the pastor, who's left in your church? And he said, no one. Everyone has fled. He says, but we're full every Sunday. <laughs> and, and I said, well, help me understand. He goes, well, my church left, but refugees came. And because we're feeding them, many of these people are coming to church for the first time. And they're hearing about Jesus for the first time. And in the middle of a war, they've had two baptism services because of the people that are leading the faith. And so, I want to encourage those pastors uh, to give them hope. The next tool you have is wisdom. And I always like to say wisdom is perspective. And I, I, I want to be a person who has God's perspective. I can see people from God's perspective. I can see situations from God's perspective. Uh, that would make me much more wise. But for those of us who are in leadership or in ministry at Eaglebrook Church, it's good for us to have Eaglebrook's perspective. Because there's a heartbeat here, there's a vision here, there's a direction that we want to be in harmony with so that we can reach more people for Christ. And even as I lead the Eaglebrook Association, <clears throat> we're not trying to create Eaglebrook churches all over the country and all over the world. But we are trying to help them with principles so that they can be more effective. And we have some wisdom to pass on to other pastors. And we're on pace just for this ministry year to see 20 to 25,000 people give their life to Christ through the churches that we're coaching and pastoring. Isn't that amazing? And Eaglebrook has had over 5,000 salvations this ministry year. And we're not done. But that's a lot of wisdom, perspective that we can pass on to people. 
And part of wisdom is just experience over time. And that's what you have. You have a lot of experience over a lot of years. That's a lot of wisdom that needs to get passed on to the next generation. That's part of the legacy. <coughs> truth. Put truth in your tool belt. And again, because of your wisdom, I think it's easier for you to see the truth, to embrace the truth, and to share the truth. It's good to crave feedback. It's good to have an attitude of how can I get better? Where do I need to grow? And if I see something in, in a dear friend where they need to grow, how can I tell them the truth with love so they can hear it? That's scary because we're from Minnesota and we're Christians, so we don't like to do that. You ever notice that? We're not all Scandinavians, but we have kind of a Scandinavian culture in the Twin Cities. And uh, Scandinavians don't like to tell the truth. <laughs> I was in Norway with a pastor, and we were driving into his little town in the southern part of Norway, a town called Christensen. And he said, Dale, when you come to Christensen, if you make a friend, you'll have a friend for the rest of your life. But if you make an enemy, you'll never know it. Because they'll never tell you. Because <laughs> they don't like to tell the truth. <laughs> but I think, I think Christ followers should be truth tellers. We should love to hear the truth, and we should love to tell the truth, and we should love to embrace the truth. But it has to be done in love. It has to be done in love. Your last tool in your belt is accountability. And I heard a definition of accountability many, many years ago that really opened my eyes. And it was, accountability is not catching people doing things wrong and correcting them. That's not accountability. Accountability is really relational, and it's I'm committing to going on a journey with you. Think of that. I'm going to go on a journey with you, and I get this, and I will teach you, and I will encourage you, I'll share my wisdom with you, I'll tell you the truth, but I'm committing to a journey over a period of time. I'm committing to a relationship. That's accountability. And so, who can you be in relationship with, with great intentionality, <coughs> using these five tools, using your influence to lead the legacy? And I, I gave you some discussion questions for your small groups when you break up, but I, I think every one of us should be going, uh, who do I have influence over, and am I leading them with intentionality? so that the legacy gets passed on to the next generation. So you don't get to just do nothing. <laughs> I think God wants to use every single one of us as long as we have breath in our lungs. So that's my challenge to all of us today is, how can you increase the legacy using these five tools? There you go. How was that, Mom? Was that as good as Byron? Or? Yeah. <laughs>